So, you've just made yourself a fancy new robot arm. And after you got over the initial excitement of moving all the various joints from your computer, you've realised that it's a pain in the bum to position it just by altering the angles of each joint. What you need is inverse kinematics, so you can control the position of the gripper using X, Y and Z coordinates. Inverse kinematics are really easy for a robot arm with three degrees of freedom, and I've shown how to do it from scratch before. But for a proper robot arm with six or even more degrees of freedom, it gets crazily complicated. And I don't want to have to dive into weeks worth of maths just to get my robot moving. I'm sure you don't either. So let's cheat. It turns out that most of the hard work has already been done for us by other people. But before we dive into the code and see how to do it, we first need to tell the computer how our arm is built. To do this, we can use a file format called URDF. This is used by systems such as ROS and lets us describe our arm in huge detail. But for now, let's keep it as simple as physically possible. I've drawn out this super sketchy diagram of my robot arm with distances between each of the joints and the directions that they move mark on it. In order to turn our super sketchy diagram into URDF, we'll start by defining a link. A link is just part of the arm, so anything that moves independently can be classed as a link. We'll start with a cylinder of the length that we defined on our diagram and then a radius of around about nine centimetres. Next, we need to define the origin. This is where the part is actually placed. By default, URDF puts the origin in, right in the middle of the geometry that we define. So we're just gonna move it down the z-axis by half of the length that we've defined here. We can preview our work using the JupyterLab URDF extension so we can see what it looks like so far. Really exciting, isn't it? Going back to the file, we'll make a box to represent the part of the arm that rotates on the base. And then we can add a joint to link them together. We need to tell it that it's a revolute joint, that's a spinny joint, and that it goes around the z-axis. Then we need to define the origin, and that's just the height of the base, plus half of the height of the link. Now that we've done that, we should be able to see it in our preview again. And we can see now we get a slider that lets us play with the angle of that joint. Let's add a new link for the first part of the arm. It's just a cylinder of the right length and radius. Set the origin again to half the height of this cylinder. Then we can add a joint to link them together. This is another revolute spinny joint, but this time we're going to say it can rotate around the x-axis. I've put some limits in here as well so that it can't go too far. The limits might look a bit odd, but they're in radians instead of degrees. This is basically 180 degrees either way. So we can check that out in our viewer again, and we can see we've now got another slider that lets us play with that one. I'll just quickly whiz in the rest of the links and joints. And now in the preview, we should be able to see the completed arm. It's not the best looking thing in the world, and I promise I'll make it look better at another time. But you know what? This is all we need for now. So now we can get into the meat of this project. I've written an easy to follow Jupyter notebook, and I'll quickly walk you through it. Oh, by the way, you can download this along with all the CAD for the robot arm from my GitHub. It's linked down in the description. We're going to be using the IKPY library. So we'll import that and then anything else that we need. And then we can move on to creating our chain. The chain's what we call the representation of the robot arm. So we just tell it to import from our URDF file. And then we tell it which of the links inside we want to be able to move. We don't want to move the first link because that's just the base of the robot that sits on the desktop but all the other links we want to be able to move. Once we've done that, we can set the position that we want the end effector to be in and its orientation as well. Here we're telling it that we want it to be at x0, y0, and z being 58 centimeters. And we're telling it that we want it to point sort of that direction on the x-axis. With that done, we can work out the angle of the joints with a simple call to the inverse kinematics method. Here you can see, as we're pointing straight up in the air, the shoulder and the elbow positions are virtually zero. Once that's done, we can actually check the robot's going to be in the right position by calling forward kinematics. This will take all the angles that we've just worked out and then work out exactly what position the robot's going to be in. You can see that the robot's position matches the position that we set here. But that's all very well. We need to see what it actually looks like. So using PyPlot, we can quite easily call the plot method on the chain and see what it looks like. There we are, a line pointing straight up. If we were to change the target position, say 0.2 on Y and 0.1 on Z, and run this again, we should be able to see 
the robot arm now at a different position. I've just wrapped up all those calls into a couple of functions just to make it a bit easier to move. So now we should be able to call that move function, give it a slightly different Z value, and we should be able to see our robot arm has now moved up slightly. Okay, so this is a good looking graph and all, but we really want to be able to move our arm around. We'll just quickly connect to the serial port and then write a quick function that sends the result of our inverse kinematics over the serial console to our robot. If we run that with the results of our current inverse kinematics, it'll move the robot to our current position. If we add a call to that send command function to the end of our move function, we should be able to tell the robot to move using the XYZ coordinates. Still not impressed? Okay, gotcha. Why don't we hook up this old USB game controller to it? We can add a game controller here. Then when we move the sticks on the game controller, we should be able to see the corresponding sliders move. Then we're just gonna need a quick background task. About every 50 milliseconds, we're just gonna monitor the values of all of the joysticks on the controller, and then change our XYZ coordinates based on what's coming into them. And then we'll make a call at the end to the move function, so we'll move the robot. So now if I move the joysticks on the controller, the robot should move. Now I'm not going to pretend that this does everything. There's lots of little bits that need more work, like proper orientation of the end effector here, dealing with multiple solutions to a single position, and many other little bits and pieces. But for a quick way of getting inverse kinematics onto this arm, I'm really pleased with the results. Go on, press those like and subscribe buttons, and why don't you go and see how I made this arm by clicking here.